Hey everybody, I'm Ready Writings with 101 Great Ideas. I know I haven't posted in this playlist for a little while. That's because starting in September, I got rebuilding the quad yak with my dad, my human powered amphibious vehicle that's got its own playlist. We finished that in October. I've been riding it about 300 miles so far. By now, this is December 2017. And I've been going back through all those videos and trying to post them, the build and rides I've taken. So I've been really busy with that. But I didn't want to let this playlist just stagnate. So I'm going to try to do kind of a catch-up video today. The idea is to go through, show you guys where I'm going with both this playlist and my life in general. This is what I plan to do for the next, well, I joke around and call this my 20-year plan. And I think you'll see as I get into this that some of these builds are pretty complicated and may indeed take years to complete. Hopefully it's not 20 years, but who knows. So, let's get started, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, let's start with ones I've already finished or started. This uh, represents my human-powered amphibious vehicle. It started as a three-wheeler, became a four-wheeler, front-wheel drive, rear-wheel steering, and here's what that looks like. I'm working on another human-powered amphibious vehicle. That one will be based on pontoons. It will have rear-wheel drive, which will rotate out of the water, rotating a flex shaft prop system into the water for propulsion, and then front-wheel steering, also recumbent-based. So far on this project, I have sourced the material for the pontoons, which is a uh, scrap eight inch irrigation pipe. I've had that shaped uh, and welded and put the beginnings of a frame on it. I've, I've filled it with AV foam to make sure it's unsinkable. I've sourced some seats and rear wheel drive mechanism and two donor bikes that will be cut up for the rear end. And here is some early tests. Uh, this boat is for my daughter, so we're using her weight to look at trim and flotation and the additional weight that will be in the rear end. Still to happen on this is building the propulsion systems and the steering systems. As you can probably tell, I like boats and I like floating things. So I think a lot about how to get things to float and what kind of problems you have in the systems that exist. I don't like inflatable pontoons, but rigid stuff is very big. So what this represents is a rigid inflatable pontoon system that can fold up very small. Then you unfold it. Then it opens up like an envelope with these large valves on top that suck in air, maybe pressurize a little bit. And you could carry some really nice pontoons around in a very, very small space. The next couple of things are going to be what I call vacay boats. Uh, really cheap, really fast build. Say you're somewhere for a week, you don't have a kayak with you, but you want to do some floating. I'm trying to figure out ways that somebody could walk into a hardware store, build a boat for 20 to $50 that last them a week on vacation. This represents going out to a beach somewhere, stomping a form out in the sand, putting a tarp down, pouring in AB foam, expanding foam, do it all up, you got a boat. This is a design I have to take the ubiquitous blue rain barrel, cut it up, maybe do a little quick plastic welding or maybe just bolt it together and have yourself a little kayak that you could use for a couple weeks. This represents making a frame out of PVC or maybe bending metal conduit, then putting some shrink wrap or some other kind of material over it, duct tape or a tarp or something like that, build you a little internal frame skin on boat. This is an idea I have for attaching a pedal powered cam driven paddle wheel system to an existing kayak or canoe. So you sit in the boat, instead of pedaling it, it'd be more of a push rod system. Turn a cam that would go to 45 degree angle. It's not a great drawing, but these uh, would then angle into the water on both sides of the boat like that and provide you with leg power. This is my human solar hybrid power station. But here I'll show you some of the parts that I've sourced recently. I've got some batteries, I've got some motors, I've got some solar panels. I've done an intro video to this, 
That's episode three in the 101 Great Ideas playlist. It's kind of cheesy, but it's just there to give the basic concept. I still need to build a frame and get a charge control. Here's an expanding pull behind pop-up camper for a bike. Goes down the road at about three feet wide, three feet tall, four feet long, and expands out to about seven and a half feet long, kind of pup tent size, possibly with some uh, roofs to pop up as well, give you a little bit more room in there. Just something to get you out of the weather on, you know, backcountry trail kind of riding. Here it is shown in both its compressed and expanded forms. This is only about half width. I was trying to work mostly on the expansion system and the wheel system. I got hung up trying to find a good material for the side and top walls that was weatherproof and insulated. I'll get back to this at some point in the future. Then you take that system and you add to it solar roof, and batteries, and an e-hub, an electric hub on the back of your your bike and now you have a system that charges up and helps push you down the trail. You can go longer distances and get there faster. Building on that idea, what I want to do is eventually make a one-person RV. Solar roof, recumbent drive, you sit here, you pedal this, which is a generator there. That charges this battery in the back. You have electric motors in the back. And that way you're not trying to push four or 500 pounds down the road with your leg power. You're just charging the batteries up. The solar roof is charging the batteries up. The idea is that you could pull in somewhere, even in inclement weather, turn around, cook, go to bed, never even have to leave this thing if you didn't want. Take the same idea and apply it to a pontoon system. Now you've got you know your solar roof, your recumbent bike, your generator, your batteries, your sleeping area. You're on a couple of pontoons. Now you've got a miniature houseboat. You could stay out on the water for a long period of time. Something like this would carry 100 pounds of food. You got a place to sleep. <clears throat> this could be used for long distance, one person water travel. Whenever I start thinking about ideas like this, it always gets me to some other idea. So for all these long range, gonna be out in the wilderness for you know a week, 10 days, longer maybe, then I start thinking about you know cooking. So what this represents is a, I call it a micro kitchen. So you've got a little burner here with a propane tank underneath. You've got a flat uh, thing like a cutting board, essentially. You got a water tank underneath it. You got a propane tank underneath it. On top, you have a little, you know, dog bowl sink here with a pump water system. You got a burner there and you got some prep area here. Put some legs on on the side so you can stand it up, you know, outside somewhere, sit in a little camp chair cook outdoors or have it where it mounts inside your little micro RV. Along the same lines, I've thought of something I call a micro cooler. So any cooler I've ever seen is just way too big for some of the things I want to do. I want this thing to measure maybe six inches across, two or three inches tall, but have an outside area that you could dump some ice water into that would cool an inner thing just enough to keep a few little things cold for a day or two some cheese some meats or whatever uh, I also got the idea to make a reusable I call it the ideal gas law can cooler uh, you put a, a soda can in here you pressurize this outside and I, I believe you could do this just with air maybe you'd have a double walled thing pressurize the inside with an inert gas of some kind and you know your argons your freons and let it loose from one to the other that gas expansion will cool it down and cool your can and then you just move the gas from one side to another with some kind of pump system so you could recharge it but you could cool one can at a time whatever you want so here's a passive solar heating element uh, essentially, you use something, you know, a cast iron and terracotta plug with a Fresnel lens during the day. So you got a, a winter day, you got sunlight, but it's not very warm. But you can heat up this cast iron terracotta, move it inside your tent, inside your mini RV or whatever. You know, after it absorbs heat all day, then it'll radiate heat during the night. And I had to play around with the composition of this thing to get it to disperse that heats slowly over a six or eight hour period. Here, <clears throat> here's an idea for taking a space blanket, 
ceiling at the top of like a pan that you can pull a vacuum on and that would pull that space blanket into a parabolic reflector. I tried this once and it actually worked pretty good and I'll work on that video pretty soon. It wasn't great so I wanted to kind of beef it up and try it again before I do that. I'm getting uh, two or three hot spots there. One of them very... Yeah. That is certainly a hot spot. I've been wanting to work on the uh, survival solar water still for a while, make a kit that people could take with them, you know, that would have everything they needed to do this very quickly, dig a little bit of a hole, throw some brush into it, uh, have it with its own pump and or drinking tube to easily access the water so you don't have to take it apart. Just make it kind of idiot proof so anybody can take it out, instructions, you know, throw in the back of their car if they happen to be in, you know, desert area that that this might save their life someday. If you've done much camping, you realize that sometimes you're camping on the side of a hill. So I've got an idea to do a double layer air mattress where you can selectively inflate these bottom tubes to whatever level you want and it would level out your air mattress. All right, on to the big builds. One of the things I want to do someday is take some kind of Jeep dune buggy kind of vehicle, put a large solar roof on it, charge batteries, electric vehicle, uh, this one shows this down here, this PTO. And I'll get back to that later, but uh, just remember that for now. Power, PTO means power takeoff. Something I really want to build someday is a solar-powered RV. One of the ideas I have is do something like this with a camper, solar roof, big battery pack in it. Thing can sit there and absorb power from the sun all the time, and then you can marry it to your solar electric vehicle and it provides the extra power needed to pull itself, essentially. The other way to do this is not have a trailer type, but have what's called a Class C type, an all-inclusive RV. Uh, solar the roof, you know, battery packs, electric vehicle. One of the things I think you might need to do is expand your solar roof space. So for that, I've got this idea right here where going down the road, you'd have two uh, layers of solar panel and when you parked one would extend down to be an awning the other one lean up what that does for you is it maximizes on your instance of light hitting your solar panels this is probably my most complicated idea what this shows is an amphibious houseboat you go back and have that solar electric vehicle that can pull a pontoon boat with wheels that retract. So it's not on a trailer. Once you launch it, you just pull the wheels up. The vehicle backs up this ramp onto this. Remember that PTO that I mentioned? Power takeoff is a way to provide power outside of a vehicle like this. That's what this shaft is here, coming down to a propeller. Then you have a living space back here, also with a large solar roof, batteries of its own. So when you're going down the road, again, it provides more battery power to pull itself. Get to a boat ramp, unhook, drive your vehicle onto the boat, launch, and when you leave, you take everything with you, which means you could go on long lakes and start at one end and come out hundreds of miles away somewhere else and still have all your stuff, not have to go back to where you started. Here's an idea that doesn't really fit in any other category. Uh, come up with a better way to do scuba fins. Uh, essentially what you have is a brace that would go around your ankle and the fin part would fold up against your shin. You'd have a release mechanism here. You went in the water, you'd hit that release mechanism. It'd spring down, it'd all be spring loaded. So when you're walking around, it's just up against your shin. And you get in the water, you can pop it out and use the swim fin and that solves that problem of flip-flopping around on a dock or on a beach with swim fins that people deal with now. And I saved this one for last. I think we're at about 25 now. Um, what this represents is a hydroelectric upriver boat. So you've got a cockpit that uh, maybe even big enough to sleep in, but definitely big enough to just sit in and ride and steer. And then it's on two long, thin, tall, pontoons and that comes into play later uh, this is electric so electric 
battery and motor and and a prop in the water. And so that's what it looks like traveling. And the, the idea is they would have very low drag and maybe a three to five horsepower motor, but it would be fairly light. So it would be able to go up river against the current. Now, where does it get its power from? Well, at night, whenever you'd stop, you take those pontoons, you would spread them out, catch all this current coming in, it would get funneled down past your propeller. Now it's spinning the propeller, which is spinning the motor, which is now a generator, charging your batteries back up. This is an idea, kind of a proof of concept, just to see if it's possible for the power of a river to then push you up river. And if this works, this would probably be the next big trip I will take after the coast to coast trip that I want to take on my amphibious vehicle. I want to try to take this thing and go up the Mississippi River with it. So what's next? Well, I've worked on a few of these projects. I posted a few pictures along the way in these videos. Now it's time to go back and do full length videos on the progress of some of these projects. So those will be coming. I'll, I hope to do about one every week or two. So stay tuned. I've already proven myself that I can take one of my ideas, build it to completion, and then take it out in the world and use it. And now I want to do it with the rest of them. I hope you join me on my journey. And if you have a minute, go over and check out my Patreon account at Patreon slash Stereo Randy. You'll find tons of extra stuff over there. There's going to be more videos, more photos. There'll be rewards. Uh, some of the things I want to build, like the micro kitchens. I might build eight or ten of those and give some of those away to my supporters. So there's going to be that kind of stuff over there. I'm Randy Writings, and this is 101 Great Ideas.